Hello, I'm Brian Hayes. I'm a Salesforce and Pardot consultant with Rotiv. We're an official Salesforce partner and we help small businesses automate their processes. This next video is a lesson from our one week Pardot course. If you find it useful, you can sign up for the complete course at academy.rotiv.io or by clicking the link in the description below. In this build video, we're gonna take a look at grading. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how you set up grading in Pardot so you can better understand who your best prospects are in your system. So the first thing we need to do is click on the Prospects tab across the top and then go to Segmentation and then go to Profiles. So grading is based on profiles and you can have multiple profiles within Pardot. And within each profile, we'll have different sets of criteria on which to grade that particular prospect. Now, a prospect can only have one profile. And, and you might wanna have multiple profiles if you have very different types of prospects in your system. So if you are a marketplace and you have buyers and you have sellers, then having those two different profiles are probably gonna be really useful. Another example might be if you're a roofing company and you have insurance customers and you have you know retail or cash deal customers, that might be a very different profile as well, depending on different types of criteria. So to begin with though, I would just start with default. You know, start with one, get that set up, get that working. And then if you want to expand and have, you know, different profiles so you grade people differently, you can absolutely do that in the system. So we're gonna click on the default profile here and take a look at the default criteria. It's company size, industry, location, job title, and department. All right, well, that's not bad. You can hit the edit profile button in the upper right-hand corner and we can add additional criteria, we can remove, we can change the name of it. And what we're looking at in this screen is really a label. So there's no logic going on here. It's more like a category of criteria that you're interested in. So company size, we could easily write in number of employees, right? Or we could write in number of beds if you're selling to hospitals, as an example or enrollment if you're selling to teachers uh, or to schools, doesn't matter. In our case, we'll leave it as company size. Industry is often a really good one to include if you're selling across different industries. Location is also valuable if geography makes a difference in what you're selling. Now, I would say this doesn't have to be your perfect customer. Instead, I think that grade should ultimately reflect who's most likely to buy. So for example, you might be a services company and you might have clients on the West Coast, but maybe you don't have any bias on the West Coast. Maybe you would be happy to work with any company across the United States or even across the globe. But if most of your customers are in say Southern California, you might wanna give a boost to other companies that come in in the door, other prospects that are in Southern California because the likelihood that they're gonna become a customer is probably higher. They might know your existing customers, they may have come through as a referral from an existing customer. And certainly when you start talking about work you've done in the past, they're gonna recognize some of the names of people. So location is a great one to have. Job title, also good for looking at CEO, executives, if that's important. If you're selling a product to the marketing department at a company, then obviously we want marketing to be included somewhere in that job title. And then department here, I often find is a bit duplicative of job title. So I'm just gonna delete that one. But any other ones you wanna add, definitely do so and think about what's that criteria that makes somebody a really good fit for our business? Or what's that criteria that makes them very likely to purchase? So it doesn't necessarily have to be that you like them better as a prospect than somebody else because they're in California, but if they're more likely to purchase, because that's where the, most of your customers are, then I would leave that in there and make sure that it's reflected in the grade. So that's our criteria name here. On the right-hand side, we've got grade adjustment. So the grade is gonna be like an A or an A minus or a B plus or a C, and whether or not somebody matches against this criteria will increase or decrease that grade. And so our options here are one, two third, or one third letter. So if you're at a C and you match the company size with a grade adjustment of one, you go to a B. 
if you're at a C and we set this to two thirds, you would go to a B minus. If we set this to one third, you would go from a C to a C plus. So it's a way to weight these different criteria here as, as needed. So I would say company size will make that very important. Job title will make very important. Maybe industry is less, put that at one third and location we'll put at two thirds. But again, it, it's really up to you on how you see the different criteria and how it compares to each other, how it's weighted relatively. Okay, once you're happy with that, hit save profile and we've got a great start. So I'm gonna click into one of our prospects here. We'll take a look at Jake Lund. And if you click on the profile tab, you can see our criteria shows up here. And if we were to manually change this criteria, we can hit thumbs up or thumbs down to say that they matched our different criteria. So we'll say they matched three and on industry, maybe we don't have any data on it. So we'll just skip that. If you come back to overview, you can see that reflected right here in the grade. Jake has now moved up to an A minus. But obviously we don't wanna do that manually. So let me show you how you automate it. The way to automate the grade is to use automation rules. If you click on the automations tab here, on the left-hand side, the second option is automation rules. And we can use these rules to grade people dynamically so that we don't have to do it manually. Now, especially with grading, we're gonna need to create multiple rules here because they're all set up with a simple, if this, then that type logic. So if industry is education, then say they match on profile, criteria, so on and so forth. So we'll need to create at least one rule for each of the different criteria we've got in the profile. So I'm gonna start with location. And a naming convention here is really helpful. So I like to start with grading, and then I'll call this you know, industry. And a folder is a great idea for these rules as well, just to keep them organized. So I'm gonna add a new folder here, and I'm gonna call it grading rules. There we go. And of course, you could add a tag as well. Description is also recommended for these so that it, it's easily understood what's happening in this rule without having to take a look at the individual steps of it. So we'll say, if industry is education or government, match. Looks pretty good. If you create additional profiles, you'll need to create additional rules and you would likely want to change your naming convention to grading dash profile dash industry. Maybe default profile, maybe whatever the name of that secondary profile is. All right, now we're ready to build this thing. So we've got our rules section and our actions section for an automation rule. If you click add new rule, you'll see it's really similar to building a dynamic list. We've got many of the same options here to choose from and the add rule versus add rule group works exactly the same way as dynamic lists. So in our case, we're gonna click on prospect default field and we'll choose industry. And if industry is, we can then write in education or we can write in government with a semicolon separating them if you wanna have multiple values, just like a dynamic list. And you can write in as many values as you'd like here. And if a prospect has education or government or whatever other values you add here, then we want this rule to take an action. So that's the next thing we're gonna add. Add a new action. And what we're looking for here is change prospect profile criteria. Here it is, change profile criteria. Select that. Next drop down is to choose which profile. In this case, we only have one. Next option is to choose which criteria from that profile we wanna select. In this case, of course, industry is what we're looking for. And then we can say, does it match? Does it not match? Or is it not known? So we want it to match. And I recommend when you're first creating these profiles, just create matching rules. So if you've got four different criteria, then create four different rules for the values that are gonna match so that uh, we're increasing that grade. Because everybody starts off at a D. So they're already pretty far down. So start with matching to move that D up and get it closer to an A. But you can, of course, create the inverse. You can create rules that specifically do not match as well. That's a little bit more advanced. I think it's only useful if you know that there's a particular industry or job title that is a negative signal of being a good customer. 
for example, maybe you're selling only in the United States. So if somebody comes in and their location is outside of the United States, it's a negative signal. If they're in Canada or Europe or somewhere else, let's say it does not match so that that grade gets decreased and we're not accidentally thinking that they're a better prospect than they are because maybe they're just never gonna be a customer if we can't sell outside of the US. But again, start with the positive side of things. Create these rules based off the values that are gonna to lead to a match. All right, now you've got a couple other options here. You could repeat the rule or we could execute in real time. So I don't recommend repeating the rule. It's just not necessary and it'll use up resources. If we were to repeat this rule every single day, it's gonna match the same people every day and won't change anything. So it's just not really needed. And then execute in real time, this is not the kind of automation we need to run immediately. It can be batched throughout the day uh, and update those grades. So we don't need to check that either. Let's preserve our resources, make sure everything else is running very, very fast. And that's it. Click create automation rule. Whenever you create an automation rule, it will be in a paused state. So all you need to do here is click the actions wheel on the right hand side and click on resume. You can also click into that automation rule. And at the top, there's a little link that says resume automation rules. Once you do that, it is live. And this is going to start grading our prospects in the background. And if their industry is education or government, it's going to increase that grade. So to finish out setting up grading, create additional rules, one for each one of those criteria in your profile. Once that's set up, it'll automatically run well into the future. So as you're adding new prospects, they're going to get graded automatically. And you'll be able to see, are they an A or a B or a C plus or how high quality are they? It's also a really useful tool if you get a list of prospects from a trade show or an event or somewhere else and you're importing them into Salesforce, you'll be able to see right off the bat how high quality was this event? Like, Are these our kind of prospects or not? Even before a salesperson reaches out to them, you'll have this grading model to understand how good of a lead list was that that you just imported. Thanks for watching that lesson from the One Week Pardot course. If you'd like to see the other lessons, you can click the link in the description below or go to academy.rotive.io. And if you did find it useful, please hit the like button and click subscribe. Thanks for watching.